Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Sonal and today our topic of discussion is going to be acidity, basicity and pKa. Before watching this video, it is important for you all to know the theories which are related to the acid base concept. So I have a detailed video on the same on my channel. Link to it will be provided to you all in the description box. So please go ahead, watch that video first and then come back to this video. So before we jump into pH and pKa, let us do a quick revision of the definitions of acids and bases, okay? So we know that if I want to define acid and base in terms of protons, then I have to say that an acid is going to be proton donor and a base is going to be a proton acceptor. Okay, secondly, if I want to define acids and bases in terms of electron pair, then I can say that acids are electron pair acceptors, they accept a pair of electron and bases are electron pair donors. Okay, this much of basic understanding is required in order to understand pKa, Ka, pH, all of these terms. Okay, now pH of any solution is defined as negative log of concentration of H3O plus. Okay, if you want to find out the pH of any solution, we have an equation for it. pH is equal to negative log of concentration of H3O plus. Okay, H3O plus over here is nothing but your hydronium ion. H3O plus is the hydronium ion which is same as H plus okay but whenever we tend to dissolve acid in an aqueous medium specifically when your solvent is water what happens is that H plus which is released it gets picked up by a molecule of water so H plus plus H2O will give you the hydronium ion okay so pH is defined as negative log of H3O plus fine and then coming to pKa pKa is defined as negative log of Ka, okay? Ka is nothing but the dissociation constant, okay? So, we require this data. This data is important for us, yeah? pH is equal to negative log of H3O plus, okay? Now, this is basically the concentration of H3O plus, okay? Square brackets we use in order to represent concentration term, fine? pKa is equal to negative log of K, okay? And Ka is nothing but the dissociation constant. Next, we will try to understand how pKa and Ka differs with the type of acid that we are dealing with, okay? So, usually when we talk about a strong acid, strong acids are known to undergo complete dissociation in aqueous medium, okay? The dissociation of strong acids is very, very high in aqueous medium. So, we can say that the dissociation constant in case of strong acid is going to be high. Okay, the dissociation constant in case of a strong acid is going to be high. Okay, when you talk about a weak acid, what happens? Weak acids, they do not ionize much in uh, your aqueous medium, right? Their ionization or their dissociation is barely minimum. Okay, so Ka, that is dissociation constant in the case of weak acid will be low. Okay, in the case of weak acid will be low, right? Now the opposite of Ka will hold true for pKa because pKa is negative log of K, right? If the value of Ka increases, obviously the value of pKa will decrease, fine? So pKa in the case of a strong acid has to be low and pKa in the case of a weak acid has to be high. Okay, so now I can make a conclusion over here. I can say that stronger the acid stronger the acid, higher is the Ka, okay, I'll just rewrite this, yeah, stronger the acid, higher is the Ka, lower will be the pKa. This part is very, very important for us, this particular statement. Stronger the acid, higher is the Ka, lower will be the pKa, 
okay so any strong acid if you consider the ka value for that acid will be very high and obviously if the ka value is high pka will be very low okay if you have a weak acid then the value of ka will be low and accordingly pka value will be high okay now let us look at some examples example if we look at the dissociation of hcl okay if you are looking at the dissociation of hcl hcl will dissociate into h3o plus plus cl minus okay here we put the dissociation constant yeah this is a strong acid so ka over here will be high okay so ka value is high high ka therefore low pka and we know that this acid is a strong acid okay because they are dissociating to a greater extent right another example i can take is of a weak acid which is your acetic acid okay ch3cooh this will undergo bare minimum dissociation like very very less so it will dissociate into ch3co minus plus h3o plus okay so over here what will happen the k will be very low low ka therefore high pka and we can say that this is a weak acid okay so these are the examples one is of a strong acid and one is of a weak acid so let us take an example of these hydrides okay now i have ch4 that is methane ammonia water okay and hydrogen fluoride i have to identify the strongest acid amongst them okay for reference i have given you all the pka value okay this is 48 this is roughly between 35 to 38 this is 14 and this is 3.2 okay so based on the previous explanation if the pka values are provided to you all you can easily tell me which is going to be the strongest acid okay what did we say strong acid will have high value of ka and it will have a low value of pka right so the lowest value of pka over here is 3.2 so obviously hydrogen fluoride is going to be strongest acid amongst this okay so in these uh molecules which are given to us hydrogen fluoride will be the strongest acid okay that is with respect to the pka values now if pka values are not given which is usually the case how will you identify the strongest acid okay so once you have a list of acids given what you have to do is find out the conjugate base for each okay in my last video i have already shown you all a trick how to form a conjugate base is simply remove a proton okay whatever species you are dealing with just remove a proton from it fine so ch4 is present over here uh, the conjugate base will be ch3 minus okay for ammonia it will be nh2 minus okay for water it will be oh minus and for hf it will be f minus okay why do we have a minus sign because we are removing a proton h plus is leaving without electrons now so obviously negative charge will increase okay now you can see that in the case of methane the negative charge of, uh, of the conjugate base is present on carbon in ammonia it is present on nitrogen for water it is present on oxygen okay and for fluorine it is present on fluorine yeah now what we have to look for if at all any acid is uh sorry if at all any of these molecules if they are a strong acid that means the conjugate base that they form should be stable okay so basically what happens over here hf is behaving as a strong acid because it is more stable after donating the proton or you can say it is happier after donating the proton okay so if any acid if it has to behave like a strong acid then the conjugate base that it is forming has to be stable okay in this particular case obviously if i take the stability order if i take the stability order then f minus will be most stable why fluoride will be most stable because this is most electro negative okay we know that a negative charge is more stable on an electronegative element okay so on carbon it won't be stable at all nitrogen oxygen and fluorine okay so negative charge will be most stable on fluorine because it is the most electronegative that's why this particular conjugate base is the most stable base okay so 
So if this conjugate base, the one which is formed is the most stable one, that means HF is going to be your strongest acid. Okay. Now, you cannot draw a conclusion that the same method is going to work in all the examples. Okay. In every example, once an acid is given to you, you will have to find out its conjugate base and accordingly, you will have to assign the stability order. Okay. Let us have a look at another example. So here we have another example. The first one is phenol and the second one is cyclohexanol. Okay, we have to tell which of these will be most acidic. Fine. I have provided you the pKa value. Uh, from the pKa value, it is obvious that phenol, phenol. So here we have another example, phenol and cyclohexanol. Okay, we have to identify the stronger acid, right? I have provided you the pKa value. This is 10 and this is roughly between 16 to 17. So obviously for now we know that phenol is going to be more acidic in comparison to cyclohexanol. Okay, that is on the basis of pKa value. But how will you explain otherwise? Okay, so simple step. First, you will have to form its conjugate base. Okay, so phenol. The conjugate base of phenol is going to be a phenoxide ion, O minus, right? And over here, we will have, one second, yeah, O minus itself, okay? So between these two structures, you know that phenoxide is going to be more stable because the charge over here can move in resonance. There is delocalization. Here, there is no delocalization. The, the charge is going to be... Uh, fixed okay it won't be moved it will be localized whereas here it will be delocalized right so that's why since the conjugate base of phenol is stable phenol becomes your strong acid next in order to understand basicity what we can do is we can use the previous example only when we were forming conjugate bases okay so we saw that fluoride minus is the most stable conjugate base yeah now if this is Fluoride is the most stable and CH3 minus is the least stable. The opposite of it is going to hold true for basicity. Okay. So over here, CH3 minus will be most basic followed by NH2 minus followed by OH minus followed by F minus. Okay. So CH3 over here is most basic and fluoride is going to be least basic. Okay, I'm sure you all will be able to assign the reason why we have already said that CH3 minus is the least stable. Okay, and what is a base? A base is a proton acceptor, right? So if you have these four species, which one will accept, ba uh, accept a proton quickly? The quickest, yeah? So CH3 minus will accept a proton quickly because it is highly unstable, right? So if CH3 minus is unstable, it will continuously look for stability. How will it attain a stability by accepting a proton? Okay, so over here, uh, acceptance of proton will be fastest. Whereas fluoride is happy. It does not require a proton. It is happy on its own. So why will it accept a proton? If it does not accept a proton, how will you prove its basic nature? Okay, so in the case of basicity, you have to look for the unstability of your species. Okay, if your species is unstable, quickly it will take up a proton. Okay, if it takes up a proton quickly, that means it is going to be most basic. So that's it for today's video. I hope you all did enjoy it. In case you all did, then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more such content. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.